Hi, I'm Bob Garlick, your host. Welcome to season three of the Business Book Talk podcast. On each show, we will discover another great book that can help you improve yourself and your business. So I invite you to sit back and enjoy this week's author and find out what makes this book a great read. Hi, everybody. It's Bob here again. And today we have a fantastic book, uh, Solutions Business Problem Solving. And I have Eric Bolland on the line. And he was one of the uh, co-writers of this amazingly thick book. Um, Eric and Frank, Frank Fletcher, were the uh, primaries for, for creating this book, bringing it to fruition. Eric, before we get into the show, I'd love for the listening audience to find out a little bit about you, what your background is. So if you could just uh, spend a couple of seconds talking about that, that would be awesome. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Bob. It's uh, enjoyable to be with you here today. And uh, my background is basically I have had a twin career. Uh, one of the paths was in uh, academics and the other of the paths was in business. And uh, currently I chair the business division at Midway College in Midway, Kentucky. That's a small liberal arts uh, college uh, in Kentucky. And uh, prior to that, I taught at the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, and uh, four other uh, institutions. Uh, so that's part of my academic career that goes back about uh, 20 years. Parallel to that, I also worked uh, for um, uh, Wisconsin state government for some Fortune 500 companies uh, based in Madison, Wisconsin. So I mix kind of both a, a business practitioner and an academic point of view uh, that I've uh, brought forward in uh, producing this book. Now, you know, I, I've had the pleasure of going through the book, and it is viscous, I think would be a good term for it. When did you decide that uh, you felt a book like this was needed? The basis or the origin for the need for the book really comes from my own history of working in business for a good 30 years. And in that period of time, I've had good bosses and I've had bad bosses. Uh, with the, the good bosses, I, I noticed certain characteristics in the way they approached work. And the way they approached the work that they did was to have some frameworks in mind, have a way of, of figuring out how to get things done. And businesses are faced with uh, constantly trying to make the right decisions on, on what to do. And if you look at successful businesses and successful bosses, those are the ones that have made the right decisions. The people that I saw doing that were ones that had tools and devices and just what we call heuristics about how to make business decisions. Now, normally these are available only if you're at the top echelon of uh, a lot of corporations. What I thought might be helpful is to make these tools, these decision-making uh, tools available to uh, business uh, people in all, at all levels of the organization. And based on you know, my observation of people and the problems uh, they were having in business, making the right decisions, and also my exposure on the academic side, which introduced a lot of effective tools, for decision making, I thought it'd be an appropriate thing to do to put the two together in the form of a book that would be accessible to mid-level professionals, uh, higher level level professionals, and uh, everybody in a, in a business milieu, which also means uh, uh, private and public organizations. So that's the genesis of it. Uh, in terms of a long-term look at it. The immediate genesis of it was two years ago, uh, I had the idea that we have a lot of talent here at uh, Midway College in the business division. And everybody knows something that's really important that would, a, that would lead to business success in terms of better decision-making. So I thought it would be a, a good idea to really collect this talent together uh, and put them on the task of producing a book like this. And what, we, what I did was I said, uh, look, uh, for the 15 authors of the book, you are experts in your area. 
uh, I think it would be a good idea if we made a book about this. If we don't make the book about it and you write a chapter, you can still use that chapter in class or for a publication. But if we get it all put together in one consistent book that addresses the main themes of business decisions, I think we've got a good shot at publishing it. And uh, after about 30 tries with different publishers, uh, we did get a publisher with uh, Gower Publishing and then produced the book. You know, listening to that, you kind of get an idea and you look at the book, you kind of get an idea of how much uh, insight and thoughts being put into it. It, it is, um, like I said earlier, pretty viscous. I wanted to ask you, uh, now you've got all these guys organized, you, you um, have approached a publisher. How long did it actually take what was the process like? You, you, you had the guys write the, the, the chapters, and then I guess there was a, there was a very big edit um, edit stage, and then uh, culmination. You know, how long did that whole process take? That took uh, about a year, Bob, uh, from beginning to end, from the point that we got the contract to the point where we uh, we finished it off. And in doing that, the challenge was to make it be a book not a series of 19 different chapters with 19 different authors. So each of the chapters was organized in a way that we talked about the same way. We introduced the problem quickly. Uh, each one of the chapter authors did that. We looked at uh, some of the tools that were available for uh, answering that problem. And then we had the authors introduce those tools quickly. And these are proven tools. They aren't tools that, that somebody has just uh, dreamed of that think might work. They're proven business tools. And then we also had a, a, a level of consistency in terms of providing additional resources uh, for, uh, for people. So it was very much oriented towards uh, a, a business person or a person in an organization who who had some kind of issue that they wanted to have solved or, or problem, they could identify what area of the business that issue or problem was from strategy to leadership to project management, but they didn't know how to solve the particular problem. So very quickly, we, uh, we organize it so that there's a question and there's an answer for that and the introduction of a problem. So that gives, a, gives us a consistent theme throughout in terms of uh, having the book have a common feel, a common expression, and, uh, and efficiently deliver uh, an answer to the reader. Mm. You know what? It, it's uh, one of the questions I ask is uh, how should you read the – uh, the business book we're talking about, you know, should you go from cover to cover? But this book obviously is a book that you can jump around in. Is there any part of the book that you recommend people would read first? I mean, the, there's, a, there's a list of figures, the list of tools, acknowledgement about the author, and then you jump to chapter one, problems uh, and decision making. Uh, is there any part of the book you, you recommend somebody would read before they would use the book as, a, as an ongoing tool? I think a good approach, Bob, would be to um, read chapters one and two first. Uh, chapter one deals with the nature of problems and decision making, and the chapter two deals with optimizing decision making. So we, we try and characterize a lot of uh, what's happening in businesses as making decisions, and the decisions you make affect the performance of the business. You could read those few chapters and see how we're structured, how we uh, we help people um, really develop some real answers. And then you can use it really as a reference, I think, uh, kind of a guide or um, an owner's guide to business in which you may have uh, uh, some questions about accounting. Uh, you may have some questions about operations management. Then you can go right to that chapter and uh, you don't have to weave your way through to the chapter. So uh, in all, I think if uh, you know somebody familiarizes themselves with the first two chapters, they're going to see how we get this, uh, this, this broad task of providing solutions organized in a way that's uh, sensible to people. You mentioned that there was a lot of people involved in the book, but when you were putting the book together, reading a lot of these chapters, was there an aha moment for you? Say, wow, that 
totally crystallize one of my understandings of business. Uh, yeah, I think I alluded to it uh, a little bit earlier, but the the aha moment is that no matter what functional area you're in in a business, whether you're a lawyer dealing in um, you know legal issues and government relationships, whether or not you're in the um, information technology area and you're dealing with uh, networks and cloud computing and those kinds of issues, whether you're dealing with pricing, how to price, whether you're dealing with marketing or competitors or human resource management, there are processes that, that businesses use that go throughout all these functional areas. And to me, it was discovering how essentially simple some of these processes are of you know looking at the problem or issue and, and dissecting it. We refer to Einstein um, in uh, one of the earlier chapters, and it's uh, I think the, uh, the quote is, if he had a um, an hour to uh, solve a problem, what he would do would be to spend something like the first 59 minutes defining the problem and the last minute uh, solving the problem. So that structure and the, the need for a structure and the presence of a structure for decision making was, I think, my aha moment that that was so pervasive uh, within business that if you do that, if you spend the time uh, thinking about the problem instead of rushing to a solution, the solution will itself be better. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, you, you said these are pretty state and true techniques for the and the solutions that can be used by any business in, in, in any way. Is it future proof in, in the sense that if I read and, and use these solutions today in six months and in two years, will the same uh, strategies or, or solutions work? You know, how, how future proof are these ideas? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think that any business author ought to say that their book future proof um, because in fact, we do develop new tools in business uh, as we um, as we decide there are better ways of doing things. Our capacity for collecting and analyzing information is much more uh, sophisticated than it ever has been. And we use um, a lot more uh, computer technology now to uh, to do a lot of the analysis of business decisions where that was done by individuals beforehand. But the fundamentals of making the decision in terms of collecting the information, analyzing, and then making the decision are always still there. And what we have in this book are the you know the proven fundamentals of um, how to optimize uh, business decisions. We're not so bold as to say that um, uh, this will always be the case in the future. Uh, it probably won't. Uh, problems change all the time, but a lot of the fundamental aspects of business remain the same. Managing people, uh, as Peter Drucker says, getting work done through other people are still there and we can still use a lot of the techniques in, in human resource management, the tools there to, uh, to do a better job of uh, doing that. So we, are, we have tried to be current in this book uh, in some areas and in other areas as well. But in the IT area, we bring up uh, cloud computing and um, you know websites and information technology issues. So the intent is to stay current, but also present to the reader uh, things that are usable in 90% of business operations. You know, with that point, I, I assume you guys have a website that has ongoing blog posts and, and articles that people can reference as well? The uh, we do want to make this book live, and we want to make it live and also be accessible to people. So what we have developed uh, for the book is a website, and that is www.business-solutions-toolkit.com. And in there, 
what people will get uh, will be um, important links uh, like to to uh, to what you're doing. They'll also get uh, textbook uh, information. They'll get updates from the authors. The, there's a, an area where you can meet the authors. There's also an area where you can ask a question of us because uh, we will, uh, all 15 authors will monitor uh, this website and we want to see what kind of uh, problems people are encountering, if we can help, if somebody else can help. And uh, uh, that kind of keeps it, uh, keeps the book more viable than in just print form. Uh, but it is also comes out in uh, in uh, ebook form as well. You know, I'm just uh, going looking at the contents again. I know we talked about you can jump around in the book, but some people like to read from beginning to end. What was your strategy in in the deciding who goes first in the chapters? At the beginning, it kind of makes little uh, makes sense, uh, and then you get into human resource, and then marketing and uh, competitors and stuff like that. You guys must put some thought into the order of the chapters. Yeah, I think the the general uh, strategy was to to move from the internal set of issues to more of the external uh, set of issues for businesses. So when you look at us, uh, look at the book in the beginning, you'll see things that are more individualized. So how do we make a decision? Um, what uh, what's a tool or technique there, and then we we look at how we communicate with one another and our organizational design, those issues. How do we manage people, and then we start to look more externally uh, through chapters on marketing, promotion, competitors, pricing, I, and then again identifying and serving customers, and then some of the uh, operations and distribution problems that are linked together. And then we talk about uh, project management, accounting, finance, so those financial areas are linked. And then overall performance of the organization, how we measure that. And then touching the uh, the outside environment in a, in a very comprehensive way. We've got a couple chapters, one devoted to interrelationships with government entities and legal issues uh, with respect to a business from simple contracts to uh, uh, what do you do when you're in the legal environment and then finally ending on, uh, on websites and information technology. So I think the general thread, Rob, is to move from internal to to external uh, in the, uh, the sequence of the chapters. Mm, makes a lot of sense. Going through the book and, and the amount of authors and, and uh, people involved, this is basically what would you consider an MBA? In, in how to run a business, the equivalent amount of knowledge? Uh, I would say that the, the techniques and tools in the book are uh, at an MBA and undergraduate level. Uh, the uh, readers that we're looking for are, are people that, you know, have uh, uh, an interest in um, those kinds of uh, uh, techniques that are, that are taught. They may not have acquired them all, uh, as an undergraduate or even as an MBA student. But what we wanted to do was to uh, create some distance between the, in the pure academic environment of the esoteric tools, the theoretical tools, and uh, present uh, the more practical tools. So I think that was one standard that we set in selecting uh, the, uh, the tools that we have in the book. Uh, in business, in my 30 years in business, I, uh, there's a difference between a business and academic orientation. In a business, you're looking for the, the, the best available solution. In academics, you're looking for the truth. Uh, you're looking for the ultimate truth in uh, social science and in business. Um, we couldn't get there, uh, and it would be presumptuous to try and find uh, ultimate truth. So instead, what we do is to, to provide available solutions that have proven themselves uh, over time and are taught in MBA courses and undergraduate courses. But here, instead of uh, the reader having to, you know, trace back through a textbook to get an introduction to the theory and then the tool, we provide the tool right away. Uh, to uh, to line up with the question, one of the most commonly occurring questions that one might have in uh, operating a business. So there's not a, 
uh, a long search for a solution through a textbook, nor is it, there a pursuit for a myriad of solutions, many of which are untested by way of the internet. And I found a lot of business people nowadays just turn to the internet and try and find a solution, but they might find a solution, but it's not the best solution. It's not proven. So we've got this kind of this editing screen of subject matter experts who have looked through all this, who teach it, and then bring to the forefront the most useful, proven, available tools. Yeah, it's a very practical guide. It, it's almost like every business person should have a copy on their desk at all times. When they run into a problem via email or from a meeting, just go to the, the section, look at the answer, and then morph the answer or, or change the answer so it fits their particular scenarios. It enables you to be flexible, but uh, in, in a way that's very uh, tried and true. Yeah, that, that's it exactly, Bob. Before we, uh, before we run away, I wanted to ask you, is there a piece of advice you could give us, our business listeners uh, that could help them improve their business today? Well, that's a, a big question. Uh, the biggest piece of advice that I think I could give would be to work collaboratively with other people in making business decisions because we're often blinded by our own tendency to, to do the same thing over and over again. But most of the research really shows that if you truly work collaboratively with other people who may have different points of view and you have an objective system for coming up with um, um, good management ideas, that that occurs most often in a, a team setting or a group setting rather than by individual um, uh, dictate. So I think that's it. I think there's there's a real power in team decision making and using some kind of system uh, for making that decision rather than the rush to judgment. Uh, because people in business will want to come up with a quick answer. But if you even do some of the simple things that we suggest, we think that answer will be a correct one and it, w and it will endure in the future. Well, Frank, I'd, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Uh, an amazing book, Solutions, Business Problem Solving. And I highly recommend you check it out if you're in business or actually if, you're, uh, if you want a great way to get a very, very good uh, grade if you're uh, <laughs> <laughs> at university or, or at a we college. We can't guarantee that. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely, it gives you a leg up as long as you don't argue with your professor. But here in Chapter 14, it contradicts you. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for, for chatting. And uh, I look forward to going through this. I've had a chance to read a couple of chapters. And uh, it, it's written in a way that's it's easy to read. It, it doesn't you know, it's not like slogging through something that's very difficult to read. It uh, The chapters kind of uh, help you, you know, they read themselves a little bit. The small sections with nice, uh, bold subheaders uh, that you can really skip through quite fast. Okay. Well, thank you, Bob. And uh, I just want to point out that uh, it can be purchased uh, uh, and the site for the, um, the possible purchase is... Uh, www.ashgate, A-S-H-G-A-T-E, dot com, or uh, by phone, toll-free, 1-800-535-9544. Um, actually, is it available through Amazon and other places, or just that one? one yes, time? it is. Yeah. It's available at, uh, on Amazon. Now, you'd prefer people to buy straight through you or through Amazon, because they take a percentage? Uh, it's immaterial to... to to us, how it's uh, how it's bought. We just want to get this information into the hands of people who can use it the most. So uh, we're neutral about that. <laughs> okay, absolutely. Well, thanks again, and I uh, really look forward to chatting with you again about other business books because obviously you guys uh, are reading a lot of material to be able to put something like this together. Well, what we're doing is we uh, we're specializing here in applied research for businesses here at Midway College and. Uh, we are developing a, a series of books uh, forthcoming uh, along that line, you know, practical advice based on uh, good, solid academic research. Fantastic. Thanks again, Eric. 
Okay, thanks, Bob. That was an awesome book. We have some great new books and authors for you to meet in the coming shows, and I know you will enjoy them immensely. You can contact me directly at contactbob.tell or visit our website at www.businessbooktalk.com. See you next week.